it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled in the heart of Pharaoh of his servants was turned against the people and they said why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us and he made ready his chariot and took his people with him and he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them and the Lord had in the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt and he pursued after the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out with an eye hand but the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and camping by the sea beside by high road before Beersephon and when Pharaoh drew nigh the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold the Egyptians marched after them that's verse 10 and they were so afraid and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord and they said unto Moses because there were no graves in Egypt hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt saying let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians for that being better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness and Moses said unto the people fear ye not say it come on fear ye not say it again Say it again. Fear ye not. Hallelujah. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Hallelujah. Glory. He said, for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. That touches me. Standing before an invading force, the strongest in the world at the time. This was the world power of the day. The strongest army on the face of the earth they hadn't lost a battle not once they had destroyed nations and taken their kings captive Pharaoh didn't just send a group of his army he sent all of them he released all his chariots because this was something he wanted to do for all the earth to know about because Israel grew up in Egypt and became enslaved. But Pharaoh was going to get honored to get a whole nation in the bondage. It was a glorious hour for Pharaoh. Nobody wanted to miss this. And so he got his people together and they went. The best chariots of Egypt were there all of his army went after the children of Israel there was no way for them but Moses being the man that he was a man who had known the Spirit of God one who had touched God who had been in the presence of God who had known what it was to be there when nobody else was there in the presence of God you know, Jesus said, pray to your father who sees in secret. And the father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. He's the one that sees in secret. But well, nobody else is there. But when he's going to reward you, he will do it openly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he was watching all this. And Moses cried unto the Lord. Watch this. <clears throat> Verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Why do you cry to me now? This is not the time to cry to me now. I don't know where you are in your life. To understand the mysteries of God. We have moved from the rod to the word. Are you hearing this? God said to Moses, with this rod, you will perform miracles. But Joshua didn't need the rod. God said to Joshua, every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, 
that have I given unto you. All you need is step your foot there and it's all yours. He said, no man shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. All you need is a step there. And Jesus came and said, you don't even need to step there. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, you can have what you say. Glory to God. The revelation has moved from the rod to the word. Hallelujah. And things have changed. Can you say amen? amen. But here the principle is the same. God said to Moses, why do you cry to me now? God said, lift, he said, first of all, he said, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. My people don't stop. That's what he's saying. He's letting Moses understand the move of God's spirit. We don't stop when we come into this arena. In this area of life, we don't stop. We don't run away. We don't retreat. We don't submit. He said, Moses, don't cry now. Oh, hallelujah. The psalmist said, our soul is escaped. He said, the net is broken. And we are gone. Hallelujah. It's broken. Oh, praise God. Our soul is escaped as a bird. The net is broken. And we are escaped. And you know what? We've come back. We escaped to go learn it, learn the word, and then we came back. You didn't catch that. Moses escaped from Egypt. The net was broken and he was gone. And then he heard the word of God in the wilderness. At the backside of the desert, God talked to him. He went back to Egypt. From where he had escaped. We only escape to go learn the word of God. When we get it, we come back. Hallelujah. He said, our soul is escaped. The net is broken. And we are gone. But we've come back. Hallelujah. Because God said, go back to Egypt. Tell Pharaoh. It's the same thing, you know, when God brings you out of that devil's territory. He fills you with his spirit, gives you his word, and sends you back to deliver others from the hand of the devil. He said to Saul of Tarsus, I'm sending you to go to the Gentiles, turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God. There was where he was. God brought him out and sent him back. Hallelujah. Oh, I like this. Verse 15 again. The Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. This is one of the most beautiful portions of the Bible. When you see it for yourself. That God didn't say, I will divide it. God told a man to divide the sea. God said to him, stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. He said, lift up your rod and stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. God didn't say, I will divide it. He gave that responsibility to Moses. God wants you as his partner. That's why he said, don't let anything happen to you. Don't sit down there. Oh. Oh, glory. Who am I talking to now? Listen. Don't sit down there and expect a miracle. Does that shock you? Don't expect a miracle. 
Perform a miracle. Perform a miracle. Don't sit down there expecting it. Do it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. We are moving in the spirit. We are refusing to be victims. Are you hearing me? Refusing to be victims. Refusing to sit down there expecting something to turn up. God said to Moses, why do you cry to me now? Stretch your hand over. Moses was expecting a miracle. He said, stand still and expect a miracle. That's what he said. But then he said the right thing, he said, the Egyptians that you see today, oh, hallelujah, you shall see them again, no more forever. He said, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. But he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. God said, Moses, uh -uh, don't stand still, more glory to God. He said, don't sit there expecting, perform a miracle. We are sons of God. We are not ordinary people. We are born again. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. And all things are of God. Hallelujah. All these new things are of God. This new creation is of God. We are victors in Christ Jesus. Whatsoever is born of God. Overcometh the world. Whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. Overcometh the world. I don't know what you are dealing with in your life. I don't know what you're facing in your life. Maybe there's a loved one who's sick or diseased or afflicted. What are you going to do? You say, we've been praying. God is saying to you today, perform a miracle. You say, I've been expecting something to happen. God is saying, I've been expecting you to do something. He said, Moses, why do you cry to me now? Why now? Stretch your hand over the water. Divide it. We are partners with God. Paul said we are workers together with God. This is the reason he sent the Holy Ghost. To come and live in us. So that our lives can be fully supernatural. We are partakers of the divine nature. In other words, we are participating in the divine nature. We are not victims. We are victors. Can you say amen? He says in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You can turn around the circumstances of your life. All you need is to understand the principle of the word of God. You can actually turn the circumstances of your life around. Don't wait there. Don't expect something to turn up. Do something. Do it and call it so. The problem is a lot of people have never understood that the Holy Ghost has come to be with us. With the Holy Ghost we cannot fail. With the Holy Ghost we cannot lose. It has become absolutely impossible for us to lose with the Holy Ghost. The only reason a Christian can lose or fail is when you neglect the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When you neglect the Holy Ghost, you can lose, you can fail a thousand times. But when you work with Him, Hallelujah, you will never fail. Praise God. Oh, Hallelujah. I want you to see this. <coughs> Still in the same chapter. Now I'm reading from verse 16. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. And they shall follow them. Copy cats, you know. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, upon all his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am.